Don't make excuses, make improvements. Welcome back to our channel. Today we are uploading another lecture in the microbiology playlist. This is on bacterial anatomy which is an important long answer question which is asked in your exams. We will be dividing this entire topic of bacterial anatomy in different parts. So in this lecture we will be studying about the cell wall. You can also get a short answer question for two marks on the topic of the bacterial cell wall. So watch this lecture carefully. So the cell consists of a cell wall, a plasma membrane and this cell wall and plasma membrane together form the cell envelope. Now this cell envelope encloses the protoplasm which includes the cytoplasm, the cytoplasmic inclusions such as the mesosomes, the ribosomes, the, uh, the inclusion granules, then the DNA or the RNA which is present inside the cell, vacuoles, plasmids and the glycogen and metaphosphate substances. Now we have to study in detail each of these. Now some cells also have additional structures such as flagella, fimbriae and capsule. Now the cell envelope is made up of two components, a rigid cell wall and a cytoplasmic membrane. Now in this lecture let us study the cell wall in detail. The cell wall is a tough and rigid structure surrounding the bacterium like a shell. It weighs 20 to 25 percent of the dry weight of the cell. Now let us see what are the functions of the cell wall. First, the cell wall accounts for the shape of the cell. Secondly, it provides protection against the osmotic damage. Thirdly, the cell wall, cell wall confers rigidity to the bacteria. Fourthly, the cell wall takes, uh, helps in taking part in the cell division. Then it possesses target site for various antibodies, lysosomes and bacteriophages. Now these cell walls, they carry the bacterial antigens which are responsible for virulence and immunity. Now the cell wall is made up of peptidoglycan which is nothing but a mucopeptide composed of N-acetyl glucosamine and N-acetyl muromic acid. These two are arranged in alternate to each other and they are linked together by a peptide linkage. So you here you can see the structure of the cell wall made up of N-acetyl muromic acid and N-acetyl glucose amine linked together by peptide linkages. Now let us study the structure of the gram-negative cell wall and then the gram-positive cell wall. So the gram-negative cell wall is a complex structure and it is made up of five layers. The first layer is the lipoprotein layer and it connects the peptidoglycan to the outer membrane. The second layer is the outer membrane layer and this contains the outer membrane proteins also called as the OMP and this outer membrane layer it has target sites for phages, antibiotics and bacteriocin. The third layer is the lipopolysaccharide layer also called as the LPS and this layer consists of lipid A which is attached to the polysaccharide. Now LPS it constitutes the endotoxin of the gram negative bacteria. The polysaccharide it determines the major surface antigen that is O antigen while the lipid A layer it determines the toxicity. 
the fourth is the periplasmic space it is the space between the inner and the outer membrane and it contains various binding proteins for specific substrates while the fifth layer is the peptidoglycan layer so in this diagram you can easily see the five layers of the gram negative cell wall the first is the lipoprotein layer then comes the outer membrane then comes the lipopolysaccharide layer or the lps these then is the periplasmic space and then comes the peptidoglycan layer now the structure of the gram positive cell wall which is simpler than the gram negative cell wall it has only three layers first is the peptidoglycan layer which is thicker about 16 to 80 nm in gram positive bacilli while 2 nm in gram negative bacilli the second layer is that of tcoic acid now tcoic acid is an important content of the gram positive bacteria remember this you will be asked in exams so the gram positive cell wall contains significant amount of tcoic acid which is absent in the gram negative bacteria the tcoic acid it constitutes major surface antigen of the gram positive bacteria and they are water soluble polymers containing ribitol and glycerol polymers this tcoic acid is a water soluble polymer now there are two types of tcoic acids the cell wall tcoic acid and the membrane tcoic acid the cell wall tcoic acid it is covalently linked to peptidoglycan while the membrane tcoic acid is covalently covalently linked to cytoplasmic membrane now the third layer of the gram positive cell wall is made up of other components like proteins and polysaccharide now let us see what is the difference between the gram positive and gram negative cell wall which is an important question to asked in exam so watch carefully so in terms of characteristics the thickness of the gram positive cell wall is more that is about 15 to 80 nm while gram negative cell wall it is less that is 2 nm the lipid content is 2 to 5% in the gram positive cell wall while it is higher that is 15 to 20% in the gram negative cell wall tcoic acid is present in the gram positive cell wall and absent in the gram negative cell wall the variety of amino acids are few in gram positive cell wall while the variety is high in gram negative cell wall aromatic amino acids are absent in the gram positive cell wall while they are present in the gram negative cell wall actions as endotoxin is absent in gram positive cell wall while it is present in gram negative cell wall sulfur containing amino acids are absent in the gram positive cell wall while they are present in the gram negative cell wall and when the gram positive cell is treated with lysozyme they form a protoplast while when the gram negative cell is treated with lysozyme they form the spheroplast now how is the demonstration of the cell wall done the cell wall cannot be seen by light microscopy and with the help of simple dyes so special methods are used first is the plasmolysis in this method the bacteria is placed in a hypertonic saline due to which shrinkage of the cytoplasm occurs while the cell wall retains its original shape and size secondly micro dissection can be used then differential staining method can be used then reaction with antibody also helps in demonstration of the cell wall and then finally electron microscopy can be used now let us study what are the bacteria uh, uh, various forms of bacteria with defective cell wall the synthesis of the cell wall may be inhibited by either antibiotics or bacteriophages or the lysozyme so the lysozyme is an enzyme which is present in many tissues and it lyses the bacteria by splitting the peptidoglycan in the cell wall when the gram positive organism are treated with the lysozyme they form a protoplast while when a gram negative organism is treated with a lysozyme it forms a spheroplast now these defective cell wall type of bacteria they are responsible for persistence of infection
There are four types of bacteria without cell wall. First is the mycoplasma, which is naturally occurring bacteria without cell wall, and it is classified as an independent genus, and it is very stable in culture media. So this is uh, an example, a diagram of a mycoplasma in which you can see no cell wall. Secondly, are the L forms. Klinberger and Nobel demonstrated the L forms on the bacteria Streptobacillus moniliformis. So remember here an MCQ question. Streptobacillus moniliformis was first used to demonstrate the L forms and this experiment was done at Lister Institute London. So they are called as the L forms. So in this diagram you can see the various L forms. Now these L forms are stable. Either may, they may occur spontaneously or when the bacteria is exposed to penicillin. The penicillin it interferes with the cell wall synthesis resulting in formation of the L forms. Then come the protoplasts. The protoplasts are derived from gram positive bacteria. They contain the cytoplasmic membrane while the cell wall is totally lacking. So this is an example of protoplast which are produced by placing the bacteria in hypertonic medium. And these protoplasts are highly unstable. Then comes the spheroplast which is formed from gram negative organisms when they are exposed to penicillin. The difference between the spheroplast and the protoplast is that in spheroplast some amount of the cell wall is retained. So here you can see a bacteria exposed to a cell wall inhibitor or a penicillin, it started, starts losing its cell wall and finally it becomes cell wall deficient. Now what is pleomorphism and involution forms? These are two types of bacteria which occurs due to defective cell wall synthesis. Pleomorphism indicates great variation in the shape and size of cells. So here you can see various shapes and size of the cells. This is nothing but pleomorphism and involution forms are swollen and aberrant forms of bacteria which are found in aging lab culture. So here you can see the, uh, the involution forms. These are swollen bacteria found in aging or old bacteria. The next lecture we will be studying about the cytoplasmic membrane and the cytoplasm and the nucleus. That's all for now. Happy studying.